P. Diddy, a.k.a. P. Diddler, a.k.a. Puff Daddy, a.k.a. Puffy Diddlestein. This guy is in a lot of trouble. He is being accused of some very heinous crimes. Where you going? You cannot outrun me. I am black. Behind this, possibly, actually very likely, there is a giant conspiracy. One word, the Illuminati. Now, I'm not one to be big on conspiracy theories with secret societies hiding in the woods, sacrificing who knows what, but our weed is balls deep in this stuff, yo. So if you're on the fence like me, then stick around to the end of this video, because what I'm gonna reveal, you might find yourself balls deep in this too. <sighs> Now, I don't know how big this is in Taiwan, but in America, this scandal is likely to be a chain reaction of events that will set Hollywood on fire. We're talking the second coming of Me Too, Me Three, Four, Five, and Six, maybe. And the celebrities being named and possibly implicated in this scandal are some heavy hitters. We're talking Beyonce, Chris Brown, Jay-Z, DJ Khaled, and another one, Cuba Gooding Jr. With a combination of court documents and industry rumors, these fools could be in some serious shit. Now I do have to know, Pete Diddler has yet to be charged or even prosecuted for anything. So what we are watching is just a Urkal pit. But with the FBI and the Homeland Security investigating this thing, what they uncover as a full length feature film just might shock Hollywood to its core. So today, I'm gonna link all the receipts from past to present, uncovered by Pete Diddler's alleged victims, his ops, and even netizens. So prepare yourself for a freight train of hate and one how, cause you're about to be sucked into a deep, dark, black hole. Literally. Anyway, how many you don't say hate right You ever been mind fucked before? I don't think so. I'm mind fucking you right now. Sean Puffy Combs. Now, in Taiwan, this guy can be very famous. But in America, this guy is one of the major pillars of American hip hop and R&B. Usher, Biggie, Faith Evans, Pitbull, French Montana, Machine Gun Kelly. None of these guys would be stars if it weren't for Puff. Daddy. Pete Diddler has been the king of the East Coast for a long minute. His bad boy record label was the American version of Kao Inc. and Runner Yo Kong Lian combined. The Diddler discovered a lot of big artists, and he also discovered a lot of big artists. Allegedly. Can you feel my dick in your mind? Oh, I can't really feel anything. Well, what you all? What is the most dangerous and ferocious creature on the planet? Sima? Has it Sayu? Has it Lahu? Has it Sizi? Mshida? Exes. We're talking husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, and even Xiao Siden. These are the people who you tell your most deepest, darkest secrets to. The ones who can break you. And they're the last ones that you wanna make your enemies. And this is exactly how the whole Pete Diddle Sting controversy popped off. When RB singer and Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassie, spilled the beans. Now these two got together back in 2005, when Cassie was only 19, and Diddy, he was 37 years old. That's nearly double her age, yo. So I said her father. But according to her, this will be the only Hufa activity that they committed together. Because in her long testimony, when she entered into that nearly 10 year relationship with one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry, she was subjected to a fast paced lifestyle of sex, drugs, and everything in between. And it was all because the diddler forced her to do it. And we're talking physical exercises with um, some very well paid professionals. And apparently, according to her and some other people, Diddy filmed all of it, allegedly. Now, during their very long and tumultuous relationship, they broke up and got back together several times. And during one of their breakups, Cassie actually dated another rapper named Kid Cootie. And when Puffy found out, he blew up that fool's car right in front of his house. Boom! We're talking straight mafia style, yo. And in a statement to the New York Times, Kid Cootie said, yeah, it's all true, dog." And according to Cassie, she tried to leave the diddler several times, upon which he subjected her to the most brutal and physical abuse you could ever imagine. Which is exactly why, at the end of last year, Cassie filed a lawsuit against Puffy Diddlestein. But within one day, the lawsuit was settled out of court. And this would kick off a series of some of the most scandalous, crazy events of 2024. Now, within a few weeks of the settlement of the lawsuit, several other victims came forward, and we're talking men and women, and they put forth allegations of forced engagement in extracurricular activities, spiking their drinks, and even forced engagement in physical exercises with multiple at the same time. 
all while being filmed, allegedly. And one of these victims was music producer Rodney Jones, who took this case to a super saiyan level of fuckery. In his 73 page civil suit, he revealed a laundry list of celebrity names that even Taiwanese people would know. Show me the money. <laughs> and according to him, he has all the receipts photos and videos. And I actually went through all 73 pages of this lawsuit. And trust me, the information in that alone, we could create an entire series, yo. So if you wanna hear more about that, if you wanna see more about that, leave a comment down below. Now out of that laundry list of names revealed in the suit, one of them was Puff Daddy's son. And while the diddler is accused of spiking the drinks of the guests on his very private yacht, a lot of those guests allegedly Jaime Manzapasui. And one of those guests was subjected to forced extracurricular activities at the hands of P. Diddler's son, all while under the influence of whatever his father put in her drink. Now, some other notable names on that list, Nicki Minaj ex-boyfriend and rapper Meek Mill, as well as Usher, which many of you guys might've saw him perform at the Super Bowl recently. And according to this suit, they too were doing some very sketchy things with some very young people all without consent. But none of this will compare to one name I saw on this list, which will completely shock you. For those of you who've been around since the 90s, you might remember a very famous movie with a very famous star, Tom Cruise, called Jerry Maguire. And there was also his co-star who won an Oscar for this movie, playing the American football player, Cuba Gooding Jr. And in Rodney Jones' lawsuit, he claims that the P. Diddler not only groomed him, but then passed him off to Cuba Gooding Jr. for a further exploration. At this point, I'm like, well, my tai chi. this guy's making this stuff up. But here's the thing, Rodney claims he has all video and photo receipts of this. And the very document itself features screenshots of these video recordings. And there's a lot of things in this document that I can't go into detail or else we will definitely pay Huang Piao. So I will leave a link to the document down below. So after all this was exposed from Cassie to Rodney Jones, the internet started wondering, what exactly did he do? You are now in the power position. You hold all the power in your ass. Now, I've said this before, but in case you missed it, I'll say it again. When it comes to your sexuality and who you love and who you choose to be intimate with, there ain't no problem. When you force people or you touch people without their permission, I don't care if you're pansexual, heterosexual, trisexual, momosexual, whatever sexual, we have a big fucking problem, yo. So I was embarrassed for like weeks. Oh, it oh, truly is about the Benjamin, let me see. Oh yeah, he's glittering. Uh, he's glittering. He's glittering. So as you can see, Iron Mike Tyson, one of the most ferocious dudes on the planet, sitting next to the diddler is very uncomfortable. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, whenever I sit next to someone, I usually put my hand on the back of the chair or I keep it on my knee, but I ain't trying to put it close to the dude who's sitting next to me. And it could just be me or it could just be the angle, but from what I'm seeing in this video, the diddler is constantly trying to put his hand in a weird position in between him and Mike. And Mike's reaction is very telling. He picks up that fool's hand, places it on his own leg, and then moves to the edge of that very small couch. But this is all speculation. I mean, maybe he thought Diddy smelled funny, or maybe Mike Tyson himself had hemorrhoids and he couldn't sit for too long. But let me show you this next clip, which is even more strange. Right now, he's having 48 hours with Diddy. They're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but, um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. Uh, I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, yeah, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. We going crazy. Crazy. Now, but crazy. We all shout wild. He said buck crazy, which just means no holds barred, completely off the rails, out of control, wild. But why would you want to be engaged in this type of activity with a kid who's not even out of high school yet? And just when I thought, hey, maybe we'll shout tight uh, maybe I'm seeing things that aren't really there. Then I had a look at the comments under this video. Justin, whenever you're ready to tell your story, we're here for you, boo. The fact that this is out in the open for 14 years and nobody questioned it until now is crazy. Diddy was disappointed when Justin said, let's go get some girls. 48 hours, let's go, um, are we gonna, let's just go get some girls. Let's go hang out some girls.
The way Diddy looks at Justin the whole time looks like a lion looking at a meal. Now, what I showed you so far could probably just be up to everyone's own perspective and interpretation. So let me show you another video where Diddy is speaking for himself. Yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? Yeah. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you oh, when you're scrambling ahead, and ahead. scraping no, for no, shit. No, 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 I, got I no like shit. that. Yo, my man just called him Daddy. Now this is a podcast with Diddy and his fellow rapper Fabulous who's actually signed to Diddy's Bad Boy label. Did you miss me though? Mm. For real, because we, huh? why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, we, we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, and... No, but me and you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? All the weird things he's saying to this fool, you can tell makes Fabulous visually uncomfortable. He won't even make eye contact with that nigga. He's asking if he missed him and why won't he join him to celebrate his birthday and all this weird goo Goofiness. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. Let me pick it up. Was talking I know that's why I said. Let me just pick it up from right no. there. This is right, why I gotta pick it up from right there. Look at this nigga. This is a bad thing, bro. And as you can see, the other people at the table are full of hate and wooden haw. But maybe. He was drinking or maybe he was high on something. But bruh, you on a live stream. That's the last place you want to be under the influence of something that'll compromise yourself. But little did you know, this was not the first time. Thank you, come here. Don't, don't sit on the bed at night. No, oh, no, just, just don't get close to the bed. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting in the bed. That's my brother right here from day one. Back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the Frosted Flakes. For real, we used to actually wrestle off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early <laughs> now he's one of the richest stars yo, in the world. And I'm yo, like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck did Puff just say? Puff just said we used to wrestle over the Frosted Flakes. And we're streaming live. That was stupid. Eh, but he's y'all. That's nearly a 10 year age gap. And these fools are sleeping in the same bed together? Even Kevin Hart has a thigh hair and one on his face, yo. Actually, probably y'all hair and one mean, That's all I. Walla, 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 poppy killer. But this is super weird. In American culture, we don't really do stuff like this. Not to mention, these two aren't blood related. And they're sleeping in the same bed and wrestling each other? That's all not. I'm just a pungyo. I'm just a kaiwa shiao and nansen just a nansen doipa. All right, let's hear what Usher had to say about this whole situation. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reed's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. And Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop. It was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. So it nobody tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell <know>? no. <laughs> See? Woo! So without hesitation, Usher says that he would never let his kids show up to a Diddy party. So you put this back to back with the clip we just played, I think you can do the math and figure out what might have happened back then. And for those of you who still might have a little bit of doubt, maybe you're thinking, ah, oh, how many just your pungyo ah, boys will be boys ah, how many young how many man, us is way, but no hurt you, how many you can do some ah. But let me show you an interview with Usher in Rolling Stone magazine. In a 2004 interview with Rolling Stone, Usher recalled how Diddy introduced him to a totally different set of sex, specifically is so hot in the industry man there was always girls around you'd open a door and see someone doing it or several people in a room having an orgy you never knew what was going to happen and this leads to some very interesting questions why in the world would the diddler allow usher who's not even out of high school to live at his house and live in a place where he had multiple gyms with lots of physical fitness activities going on often with several athletes at the same time what exactly was usher's role in this whole thing was he a piece of gym equipment that was being used you have to remember just like Justin Bieber Usher became famous at a very young age around 13 and by the time he was 16 the diddler had produced one of Usher's top ranking albums it was ranked number 25th in the world at the time we all know the huge megastar that Usher has become which leaves a lot of questions what exactly did he do right who exactly did he do right his meteoric rise was a little bit all too smooth just like Kevin Hart which reminds me of something the good old great Cat Williams said a while back. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. All lies will be exposed. That's all. In 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. I know so many things I shouldn't know and they all know it. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my 
in front of all my people at my agency. He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo, I told him no, what y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> now I've had to turn down $50 million four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling yeah. you about. <laughs> right, uh, cause P Diddy be wanting to party and you gotta tell him no. So you remember when we covered this interview a couple of months back, and we explained a little bit about the skirt theory. And how when you put on a dress or a skirt, suddenly your career skyrockets out of the stratosphere. Kevin told you he wasn't gonna wear no dress until they offered him the dress and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision, duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? Now you couple this with what Diddy's been saying and what Usher's been saying and what Cat Williams is about to say next, and you have yourself a very believable conspiracy. So there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing, and it had to be one or the other of us, and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were gonna pay him 10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. I didn't get it. I'm not mad about it. How much money did they give? 200. Sir, Fast and Furious is on what number right 10. now? Now, I'm not entirely sure if Diddy is a part of the Illuminati or maybe if he would even be qualified. I mean, my man very clearly talks too much. He's running around calling folks daddy and asking if they miss him and touching people inappropriately. I don't think they would allow this fool to join their gang, but it is very clear that as long as you do what Diddy says, good things will happen. You hold all the power in your ass. There's a very clear hierarchy within that industry. But here's the thing, before all this popped off, in 2018, five years before Cassie made her suit, someone else made a very bold and outstanding claim. They, they, they gay, Diddy and Ross and Cabin. They all gay. Okay? DJ Kelly, Rick Ross, yeah. and P. Diddy? Yeah. They all gay? Yeah. Enter in Jonathan Odie, a man who back in 2018 went into former President Donald Trump's hotels and got into a gun battle with the police. Once he was arrested, this is what he said. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would uh, he would and tell me what to do with Cassie. I was like a slave, okay? Um, I caught herpes, and I came back, and I sued him for the herpes, and won. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording, and I did so. They gave it back to me accidentally, and I threw everything out as possible I can produce it. So this fool named Cassie, he named Diddy, he named Khaled, and Rick Ross. And this makes me wonder, how did two people at two different periods of time both say the same thing, that Diddy is part of the Illuminati? Do you know Sean Combs? Daddy. Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever you call yourself. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Boulet. The Boulet is a branch of the Illuminati. Okay. Because as we know so far, P. Diddlestein is definitely involved in some extracurricular activities that involves social exchange, fluid exchange, and a hierarchical structure that definitely serves to benefit those who obey. But when you start talking about the Illuminati, we usually see this as a secret organization that gathers together and exchanges secrets on how to shape the direction of the world and multiple industries. And here's the thing, just a couple of weeks ago, all of P. Diddy's homes were raided not only by the FBI, but by Homeland Security. And I can understand the FBI, but isn't the Homeland and security usually in charge of anti-terrorism. Then I remember two songs. One by Eminem. It's the day you put out a hit. The day Diddy admits that he put the hit out. They got pop kill, eh? And another by 50 Cent. Who shot Biggie Smalls? We don't get them. They gonna kill us all. Man, Puffy know who hit that nigga, man. That Woo! So according to these two, Diddy might have had something to do with one of the largest beasts in hip hop history. Oh, and that reminds me, this song is behind a nearly 20 year beef between the diddler and one of his biggest enemies, 50 Cent. Teddy said something to me one time, a long time ago. He told me to take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the f what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let yeah. me move, man, before I do something. Did what a guy oh, says to a girl. Nice Don't make like it's just me, man. <laughs> what if you do some like, like a little fluffy stuff? That guy hates Diddy in his bones. Check it. My man has gone so far as to put in production a tell-all revealing documentary on the Diddler in which he will send all the proceeds to all of Diddy's victims. And what's the title of this documentary? Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Did he do it? And if you check out 50 Cent's Instagram, my man is posting receipts 
daily on the diddler and he's even implicated jay-z and beyonce in this whole thing and as we learned in a previous episode 50 cent is not a guy you want as your enemy this is a man who got shot nine times and survived and 50 cent ain't the only one yo even former nwa member ice cube is coming out talking with receipts some of you may not have realized that I'm not part of the club. And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't wanna be a part of their fucking club, that pisses them off. I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all gotta deal with. And they definitely know who they are. So what am I gonna do to deal with these motherfucking gatekeepers? Well, what I'm gonna do is go on a the gatekeepers podcast tour. I'm gonna go talk to everybody everybody needless to say this scandal is turning out to be one of the most interesting reality shows of 2024 you've got the illuminati you've got group exercises the physical relocation of human beings you've got explosions you've got guns and most importantly you have one of the largest investigations led by two of the largest federal organizations in the united states <laughs> but maybe it's all made up maybe it's all theater see that's it that's the art of it. I'm uh, fucking the shit out of you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Remember to like, subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side. Peace.